Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make Italian sausage patties. Uh, the reason I came up with this recipe is there's, you know, a supplier around my place that does sell Italian sausage, which is really good. Uh, but the price I'm getting is like 18 bucks a kilo, which I find is a little high uh, considering the cost of the ingredients. So what I did is I, you know, played around with the spice mixture until I hit it the way I like and of course you know it, as with any spice product if you want to change the proportions a bit feel free to do so uh, but yeah like I said I got tired of paying like three bucks a sausage and this does work out a lot cheaper so for the meat what you're going to need is a ratio of two to one of lean ground pork to extra lean ground beef and, and um, the pork that you're going to buy at the supermarket, it says lean, it's still a little greasy, but it's easier to get. If you can get to an Asian market, they usually have very lean ground pork if you want a really lean sausage. But I'm going to warn you, if you're going to do that, the patties will probably stick in the pan, or so you'd have to use non-stick. Or you can just grind your own, okay? For the spices, uh, you're going to need this. And there's two steps with it. First, you're going to grind up um, the spices that are like seeds, like the peppercorns and the fennel. And if you don't have a coffee grinder, I use a separate coffee grinder. They're really cheap now um, for just spices. If you don't have one of these, what you can do is you can put the whole spices in a plastic sandwich bag and just rub them with the back of it. Uh, tablespoon until they break up enough and that's fine too. I just like using this because it's quicker and more uniform. So in here I have uh, the fennel, anise, uh, black peppercorns, and the chili flakes. Now one thing I should say, if you find it a hard time to get anise seed, you can just uh, substitute that for some more fennel. The, the flavor will not be the same, but it'll still work. So just put all the whole spices in the grinder. And give that a few pulses. And just look at it. The peppercorns do have a tendency to get stuck under there. But you do want them all broken up. Yeah, there's one or two in there uh, that are not broken up, so I'll just give it a one more whiz. And you got to be careful about that. Some of this, you can lose a bit of this. But a little bit of these spices does go a very long way, so I would be really judicious about uh, doubling quantities and things like that. Once you've added the powdered spices to the ground spices, um, add your quarter cup of vegetable oil and give that a really good mix. And one thing I should say, I did calculate the price out uh, and the meat cost on this works out to 840, worked out for me to 840 a kilo. So it's less than half price. So once all the spices are mixed into the oil, uh, get a big bowl and of course wash your hands really well before and after handling raw meat because this just does not work with a spoon. So get both meats in the bowl and just work them through with your hands until they're visually mixed by color. Once that's done, add all the spice mixture with the oil. And mix that in really well. So when the color looks even, which is a nice part about using a dark spice mixture because you can tell visually when you're done. 
when the color looks even, grab yourself a large Ziploc bag and put the meat into that. And you're going to pop this in the fridge overnight, minimum 12 hours, 12 to 24. It's mid-afternoon, so I'm probably going to take it out tomorrow in the morning or lunchtime and show you how to make the patties and fry them. I'm not going to cook all of it because I'm going to save some for some other recipes. Now this can be frozen if you want. But what I would do is I would uh, decide what portions or how much meat you're going to need for a recipe and freeze it in separate bags. Uh, this is three pounds here, which is actually a lot of Italian sausage. You can quite, do quite a few recipes with this. And the food cost for me uh, was less than $13, so which is pretty good for three pounds of meat. Okay, so I'll just wash my hands, seal that up, and see you tomorrow. Good morning again. It's now the next day. It's around noon my time. So this has been in. The sausage meat has been in the fridge for a little less than 24 hours. So I'm going to visually take out about a pound of this. Okay. And I'm going to be making three burgers or patties. Um, so I'm just going to visually divide this first into three. It doesn't really matter. Just sort of pinch it off. Okay. I always prefer using a plate to a cutting board uh, for this kind of stuff. You can weigh these if you want, but it's not really that critical. Okay. So if you're not used to having made patties or burgers by hand before, this is a simple technique. What you do is just grab the amount that you're going to use, roughly form it into a ball, like it's a big meatball, Press it down between your hands, the palms of your hands, and then using the thumb, if you're right-handed, use this hand, thumb, and if you're left-handed, use that thumb, doesn't matter. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to press it, and you're going to turn it, okay, until you've got a nice uniform shape. If you have any pieces that are going to start to crack, just push them back together. Once it's round, you just push it flat with even pressure turning it a bit, okay, till it's as thin as you want, and then just do that with your thumb again, using the other hand to turn it, until they're just the way you want them, and that's one done, and I'll just do the other two quick. Yeah, once you get used to this, uh, you can go pretty fast. Okay, done. Next thing, heat up your pan. Uh, this is a regular pan, this is not non-stick or anything, I've got it over medium high heat and what I always do just to start them off is I put in a little bit of oil in the bottom and just wipe it out with a paper towel. This will ensure that there's just enough oil in there that the meat shouldn't stick too bad when you put it in. I don't wait for it to get hot hot because what I do want to do is I want to be able to move these around a little bit at the beginning yeah see even now they're sticking just a bit so what I will have to do is wait for them to give off enough grease that I can turn them without breaking it's been a couple of minutes and you can see that the grease 
from the sausage meat is starting to come out by the color from the spices which is mainly the paprika which is giving it that color let's see if I can yep get those up there's a little bit sticking now what I always do is I just lift the patty and tilt the pan so the grease goes over the stuck part so it sticks less that way if you put it back on dry uh, it's just going to stick more so I got that up roll the grease over the dry bit and turn that again these are looking like coming up quite nice now if it sticks when you drop it like that just let it sit for a bit move the other one over if you can make a bit more room just don't try to move it right away or it may break once the second side is seared well uh, feel free to press down on it to get any moisture or grease out of the inside of the burger into the pan and once they're seared on both sides you can flip them quite easily and they won't break on you yeah and at this point what you basically do is just keep a close eye on them and just keep flipping them until they're cooked to your desired degree there I personally always cook these till they're cooked all the way through well done now if you're not used to cooking burgers one way you can check is and I will zoom for this take a look I mean aside from the pink that's a dead giveaway um, if you just use your spatula and you can see how much give there is on there okay these are still quite tender uh, so they're not cooked all the way through yet these are nearly where I want them so I am turning heat down uh, because I don't want them to over brown on the outside while they finish cooking on the inside so they don't look burnt and you can tell yeah because these little grease bubbles are just jumping straight up and down that's always a good and for any viewers that are concerned about the amount of grease in the pan well remember it's in the pan and it's not in you so there is that As you can see from the spatula test they're a lot firmer than they were the first time I did this and I'm having to push down quite hard to get them to uh, give it all which means they're nearly done these are pretty much cut so I'm going to turn the heat off and just take one out and cut it open and show you now this I just drain on the side of the pan if you put it on paper towels uh, it'll stick So there's the finished patty. I'll just get a knife and fork here and cut it open so you can take a look at it. Yep. So that's cooked all the way through. And let me give that a taste. Mm hmm. spice balance is just right not too much garlic not too much salt so there are my homemade Italian sausage patties 